All right. Hey, everybody. Uh, it's Emily Korsh. I'm your USARA social media captain. Uh, I am here with Peter Yalis from uh, Team Checkpoint Zero. Uh, Peter just competed in the AR Georgia Blairsville Extreme 24-hour adventure race. Uh, Peter, how'd it go? Who'd you race with? Uh, race went pretty well. I raced with uh, one of my longtime teammates, Susan Alderman, and then new teammate, but girlfriend, Teresa Burke. And so we were a three-person co-ed team, and mm -hmm. we, we got first place overall in the race. So, Whoa! <laughs> wow, so everybody, we are hearing straight from the winner... <laughs> of the Blairsville Extreme 24-hour adventure race. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, how, did, how did the race go? Were you leading um, from start to finish? Were you back and forth? Kind of how did it unfold? Uh, we were not leading. Uh, well, we didn't know that we were leading when we were actually leading, but the race started off with a paddle on the lake. Uh, that was, we weren't really sure how we were going to do. Um, you know, there are 15 foot boats, they're a little slow. We didn't know, you know, how fast everybody's been paddling much. But uh, we got out there and we quickly got into like the top three with uh, Bones and then one of the other local teams. And I apologize that I don't remember their name. Uh, but uh, it was good to get out there and mix it up. Um, and, you know, we probably were. Uh, the second or third fastest boat on the water, but there were some other teams that took some portages and, you know, Ooh, smart move. Sneaky. And we looked at it and we weren't really sure about private property and how much to, you know, do that kind of thing. So we like pushed the envelope. Yeah, we paddled around because, you know, being one of the faster teams, you know, you want to set a good model and we were not going to bend the rules, uh, if you will, so. Gotcha. Right, and not, not risk a disqualification when your race was starting off well. Yeah, exactly. And we knew it would be, you know, all right, so we might lose five minutes, but we were, you know, an hour, hour and a half into the race, so five minutes, and eh, not going to worry about it at that point. Um, yep. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so I think we were the third or fourth team off the water and mm -hmm. made a quick transition into bike and rode up to some single track and then we were it was hard to tell we figured we weren't in the lead yet but i think by the time we finished a little short bike oh we were in second or third place and i think we actually were in third leaving that as we passed one of the other teams on a was it all co-ed teams ahead of you or was there was bones ahead or bones was ahead of us and then the the team of ridiculously fast uh, local paddlers uh, were ahead of us too because they they were finished the paddle like 10 minutes ahead of us. Bone finished the paddle Ooh. after us. Gotcha. But they made a... And just for the record, Bones was a two-person male team this time around, right? Yes, it was two-person male and uh, okay. we figured that the two-person teams in the boats were just a little bit slower because all the three-person teams were a little bit faster. So it's a, mm -hmm. sometimes having the tuning your team size to the equipment that you're going to get is a good, good idea. And so if we had been a four person team, like originally planned, we would have been two and two and we probably yep. would have been 15 minutes slower on the paddle overall. So three person, good size when you're paddling Jeff's boat. Right. There you go. For all future AR Georgia teams, three person. <laughs> is the ideal team size. Of course, I'm gonna qualify that with, you know, I'm almost 200 pounds, but then I was racing with two lightweight ladies. And so they balance out the boat mm. really well. If you're racing with three, you know, 200 pound guys, <laughs> you might be close to the weight limit on the boat, but just say. Ah, uh, gotcha. Okay, good to know for all your future AR Georgia teams out there, um, important intel. Um, okay, so you guys were kind of mixing it up at the front of the bike. Uh, did yep. you? Is that where you kind of pulled ahead, or how did how that yeah, work? Yeah, we uh, we caught up with Bones at a, a checkpoint that was 
Well, they thought it was hidden at a church and it was really just hanging right out front. And so we saw them rolling around in the parking lot and we just kind of cruised by and I cut down into the parking lot and Susan had stayed up on the road and she was like, it's up here. So we all kind of got together and then um, we rode pretty much together to the next checkpoint, which was just below Mulkey Gap and mm -hmm. we found that checkpoint together. It was a little tricky. I think that was, uh, I don't remember the number. And they were going backwards in num in order. But um, Oh, right. Yeah, that was like a, you needed to stay sharp mentally. Yeah. So I'm trying to remember which passport to punch because we had two passports and I had one of them and I just grabbed it and went to punch a point. And I was like, there's no like 34 or whatever on this point, this passport. And then I was like, oh, I was supposed to grab the other one. So I just punched it wrote the, the number on the bottom and then, you know, I told them when we got in, but. <laughs> right. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. That seemed, I mean, I know Jeff had to pull off some last minute heroics as race director and dealing with permits. So um, it seemed like a, I mean, it may have been a little bit more challenging um, just to manage all those, you know, running the course backwards, but uh, it seems like everyone was up for the challenge. So. Yeah. They, they did a good job. And I mean, I think the course set itself up to be run in, in either direction but I know the logistics mm -hmm. and gear around may have changed a little bit, but they did a really good job accommodating everything. Yeah, I was just thinking, uh, you know, because I direct an eight hour race myself and I was thinking, well, how, and I know Peter, you've directed races too, like that's the call you never want to get from your land manager, you know, less than 24 hours before the race. <laughs> we have an yeah. issue with your permit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So great, great job, AR Georgia, for pulling some making this uh pulling some acrobatics and making it work yep um okay so you guys uh kind of were you did you come off the bike in the lead or did you take over no, on the track or they they punched the 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 point once we punched the one point together we had to go up and over a mulky gap which is a big local climb and they just flew up that hill and we got up to the top of Mulky Gap and I went to go and flip the map and then and that's one of that was the stupidest mistake of the race is I was like uh, do we have map two and I was like looking at a <laughs> whole stack of maps and I was like oh because I had like the next K and a half shown on the map and then there was a whole nother map that took us into the TA and I was like uh, we don't have the map and they took off so we can't follow Ooh. them. Ooh. I, no, I'd ridden a lot in that area. So, you know, I know kind of where things are. And I was trying to do a memory O of, I knew we didn't have any more checkpoints, but like, remember where the TA was on all the roads. And I was like, well, we can either sit around and wait for the next team to show up or uh, we can take a stab at finding the TA. And so we were Wow. Rode oh my goodness. <laughs> So we rode all the way down like how, 7K and found a campground and ended up finding, and this was getting into uh, early morning, probably like 1.30, 2 a.m. So there weren't many mm -hmm. people awake. And we found mm -hmm. a couple of guys that were sitting awake and we we're like, did, Teresa went up to him and said, did you see the guys see two bikers? And they're like, oh yeah, they went that way. We're like, okay, thank you. <laughs> Took off. Uh... And we found <laughs> So. And like, hopefully they're sober enough to know what they're talking about. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that was pretty wow. embarrassing to forget the map. Uh-huh. Yes. Uh, so just take this uh, as proof that even experienced adventure racers sometimes do silly things. But yep. they manage to recover. Like, that's the, whole, that's the whole point is things go wrong and you just need to keep your head on straight and recover well. So great job. Yeah. There, there uh, is... So you, 10 maps and I even took the time to write like bike on this map trek and I just didn't do the overlap of bike and trek on the same map. So. Oh gotcha. So how was the trek? You kind of it was mostly dark when you started and um yep. kind of a lot of night nav. How'd that go? Um it started off we knew we were in second place at that point. Uh Bones had we got into the TA and Bones hadn't left yet and we saw them take off and mm -hmm. we figured we'd just been chasing them uh, or we would be chasing them all night and we'll see how it goes. So we made a fairly quick transition 
headed up to uh, let's see, checkpoint 20, and we basically ran them numerically in reverse order for anybody that was curious. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Did you first. have the option to do any order if you wanted yeah. to? You could do them in okay. any order. Uh, it kind of mm -hmm. just made the most sense to do them in a linear fashion, uh, at least sure. if we're going to get them all. And yep. uh, so we got the first one just fine. And one of the uh, local camera guys, Jim Farmer, started following us. And I'd given Therese the map because I was fiddling with my pack or trying to eat something. And so she was nabbing. She nabbed us perfect to the first point. And then Jim started talking to us. And she got a little bit distracted and had followed the map. And there were two spots where it ran north. And we were running north. And she's like, all right, it's just up the hill. So we like plomped up the hill and then kept climbing and kept climbing. And uh, she was finally like, yeah, we've gone up way too far. And I was like, I thought so, but I didn't have the map. And yeah, we uh -huh. look, look at it and realize like we had cut up to the left, you know, maybe 150 meters early. And, oh. and Jim had been following along and he knew the whole time and he didn't say anything. And cause he had, he was like, yeah, you cut up way too far. <laughs> He had his GoPro going the whole time and was, you know, I can't wait to see, you know, the commentary on, you know, that, the subtitles, like, they think they're going to the right point, but they're not anywhere close. Right. Wah, wah. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, that was a kind of our, uh, that was about our third mistake uh, of the race. And then uh, cut across, ran some trails, and then there were three points that were really off trail that you had to bushwhack um two and mm -hmm. uh kind of missed the attack on the first one there's a lot of parallel features and if you didn't catch the right uh spur going up you could get suckered into going the wrong direction and uh we mm -hmm. got suckered into going the wrong direction and we climbed up again probably eh, 150 200 feet before i realized like yeah this isn't turning the right direction as we came down and recovered and we were looking up the the spur that I thought we were supposed to go up. Sure enough, we saw a team like trekking up the spur and I was like, yep, that's where we want to be. Uh huh. <laughs> and I believe wow. that was AR Georgia. Uh, and they had caught up to us. And uh, in our little, two little bobbles, they had like gotten, I don't know, 10, <laughs> right. 15 minutes ahead of us, or maybe probably only like less than 10, but. Um, so yeah, and then we still had no idea where Bones were. We never actually saw them. Uh, mm -hmm. We climbed up and we nailed the rest of the orient the uh, off trail points, and uh, we didn't we we saw the lights of AR Georgia in the distance a little times where the trails like switch back. Um, you could like kind of look down the mountain or look up the mountain, and we saw them, but weren't really mm -hmm. closing any ground. Uh, but we did catch up to them on just before checkpoint 10 and on the map checkpoint 10 was shown on a really nice dirt road that was supposed to cut up alongside a creek and I knew that that uh -huh. road wasn't there like certainly not as a oh. map and I just knew from it, your previous experience in the area right yeah because I'd been there before mm -hmm. and, you know I, I just yeah. knew that that road did not exist as a nice paved road or dirt road. Gotcha. And so they were right. scanning up and they had run up the road, they'd run up one road looking for the turnoff and they were coming back. And I was like, yep, they didn't find it because it's not there. And uh, mm. I said, we're just gonna contour, gonna cut up here and contour around. And if we find a good route, we find a good route. And uh, we ended up finding the remains of the old road bed. So it had a bunch of trees and stuff growing in it. And we just followed that up, got the point, and then climbed up to and ran the uh, Duncan Ridge Trail all the way out. But uh, they they saw us cut up, and so I think they realized how fast we were moving through the woods, and they they were like, oh, they must know something. And so they cut up, and they got behind us for a little bit. But then uh, apparently they got off of the old roadbed somehow and got turned around um i don't know everything that happened you'll probably uh get to talk right yeah them. they're uh, on my list to hear from so we'll hear the other side of the story too yeah but we were wow. just 
and we were because we got to checkpoint 10 and i was like all right come on we got to go like we don't want to show you know show them where it is or you know we don't want to see their lights and you know trying to play a little yeah psychological yeah because at night especially when you know you guys all have the the really bright headlamps on it's so easy to telegraph your position and you got to be really sneaky and so we were like covering the lights and like turning around and looking and seeing ah oh, i don't see him let's go and we like kind of like all right let's let's run up this trail a little more and then we're going to cut up into the woods and let's not let them see us where we cut up and because you just don't want to mm -hmm. you know they were a fast team and i respect their navigation but i don't want to give them anything you know not that i would right. expect them to mess up but you know hey uh you know it was actually kind of nice because right. we didn't see a lot of people once we got out onto the trek and the bike and so we were able to run our own race and not play follow the leader which you know right sometimes yeah. happens yep well i just think it's so exciting like i when that happens you know in a race and you're trying to sneak be sneakier on another team it you just totally feel like a kid and like yeah you know it's just it's uh you know it's a good strategic decision but it's also like just enjoyable i think um yeah. especially when it works out and it worked out for you guys so great job yeah and you know sometimes we have code words when you're all kind of looking around in the same area and you have a little code phrase that's like not like oh hey it's over here you're you're like oh does so and so have the the this snack or something like that and then you know right. like, oh, okay it's over here let's go <laughs> right Bing! the light bulb goes on like you found the point yeah how yeah. fun so so you did you kind of have an idea on that once you finished the it was a point to point track you got on your bikes. It seemed like a pretty straightforward ride to the finish line. Did you kind of knew, know you were in the lead? Um, how did that last ride go? So when we, just after we had found that checkpoint 10, we had found a headlamp, some aqua tabs, and two uh, sets of like shot blocks on the trail going up. And we're like, oh, Bones must have dropped these. They're ahead of us. All right, so we'll just uh -huh. keep on going. We're probably in second. And... You know, so we got up on the ridge line, finished the trek out, and we were we we actually commented at one point. We're like, man, they must have really been cruising because there's a lot of spider webs across the trail, and there's some big spider webs. Mm. And we were mm -hmm. like, yeah, they're probably like two hours. They ran this whole thing. They're two hours ahead of us, and we're like, all right, probably won't catch them, but we're just gonna keep moving. And we got uh -huh. into the TA, and we were like, ah, oh, so how long ago did Bones get here? And they're like, uh, no, they haven't gotten here. We're like nobody's ahead of us we're like, no we we're like oh my gosh let's go let's go right <laughs> like we got a bogey out of here wow yeah because we had no idea where anybody else was and we had never we kept expecting ar georgia to be running up uh you know that that duncan ridge trail is really steep in places and it's really tough to like technical not scrambling but like really slippery rock and so you know we were going kind of slow at some points and uh, mm -hmm. Teresa had had a little bit of a hard time. She got really tired from like two to six and, you know, mm, yep. that kind of like sleep monster. The witching kind of, hours. Yeah. And, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, once we got on the bikes, it was just like, all right, time to haul butt, let's go. And, uh, we mm -hmm. knew we were leading and it was just kind of like trying not to look over your shoulder the whole time and, yep. uh, hope that, you know, you can hold on to it. And yeah. so, yeah. So you made it you got your uh last checkpoint made it into the finish line and uh were the eight hour racers like there to cheer you in or had they already started nope. on their race or there was pretty much nobody there there, awesome. <laughs> there were a couple of volunteers <laughs> there that were running the, the uh the final check-in and the computers and but nobody was there like no photographers right. no you know and it, it was i think we just got done a lot faster than they expected because jeff had said yeah it might take 24 hours and i've extended it to 26 and we finished mm. in 18 hours and 45 minutes gotcha well and it also doesn't help that i mean i'm sure uh covid precautions like you don't want a lot of spectators anyway yeah. um so you're already kind of starting from a kind of low place in spectator but that's always like you know, that last sprint to the finish, especially when you think you have a team right on your tail, it's pretty amazing what teams can do. Like, that's a very motivating situation. Yeah, it, it really is, you know, and you're like, oh, I'm so tired. 
I so just want to lazily pedal up this hill, but we got to go. <laughs> right. Yeah. Awesome. Wow. Um, okay. So congratulations on the win. That's just, it's so great to see. Um, and like, personally, I just always love it when a co-ed team take the, takes the overall W. Um, that's just kind of, you know, what we like to see in the sport is our co-ed teams, like really crushing it out there. And especially if your ladies right yeah especially your one man two women team they were it's so great to see and i know those chicks are super tough so great job i guess i'm kind of um, spoiled. Okay. i'm spoiled by racing with fast ladies and you know I'll probably get a lot of hate because i should be sharing but no i love my ladies <laughs> Hey, I mean, that's part of being a good teammate. If a lot of women want to race with you, that you know that, you know, you're able to um, be a good teammate to them. So just keep doing what you're doing. Um, all right. Did you have any food or gear, uh, snafus, or anything that worked especially well for you out there? Uh, our na we made a couple of nav errors, um, you know, recovered from them kind of quick. Uh, I think the only gear issue we had, tree they – Teresa wore some short socks and calf sleeves, and so there was a little bit of a gap in between. And so Ooh, I know that gap. She didn't really suffer that much during the race, but today is kind of hard. So mm -hmm. it's scrubbing after the race, you know, and getting the tech new in there. Poison ivy was everywhere. Uh, yeah. Really Ooh. sensitive right on that, you know, front part of the ankle. So uh, we're mm -hmm. going to make sure she gets some inch or two longer socks to close that gap for the next time right yeah oh yeah what a great tip though because you kind of think oh it all you know everything's covered and then just one little piece of poison ivy and then especially when it sounds like you guys had quite a bit that's gonna make life a little miserable for a couple of days yeah we i mean thank goodness for Zanfell and we washed and scrubbed after the race but i mean i we're gonna get something there like the last two checkpoints the entire mountains were covered in poison ivy Ooh. i've never seen that much poison ivy literally yeah. mountain like the whole way up was it was just Ooh. terrible yeah and you just look at it and you're like well i guess i'm gonna find out in 24 hours <laughs> like yeah how much of this we actually made contact with so wow um does uh do you guys at checkpoint zero do you have any new or next races on the calendar anything you're kind of looking forward to uh there's a couple of races coming up we're not sure which ones we'll get into there's the in cars race i think on november 7th uh, i believe it was sold out we may be able to pull a few strings and get into that <laughs> mm, yep is that the the pisca 10 the pisca race yeah it's a fantastic okay. area in cars always puts on really fun races so we 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 try to do that one every year and you know we didn't sign up early because we just you know with all the covid stuff we don't really know but that's a great one and if we don't do that right. i think the weekend after that there's the sheriff posse ar in alabama uh the oak mountain yeah, and so we may go and, and try that one uh, as an alternative. So hopefully we'll be at one of those two. Right. Okay, great. Um, now, before I ask my last question, uh, I just want to – I didn't mention this in our intro, but I just want to make sure everybody, Peter, they may not have seen you on the Eco Challenge coverage on Amazon Prime, but just – Really briefly, will you confirm to everybody that you were indeed there with Checkpoint Zero? <laughs> yes, yes. How'd that race go? <laughs> I did race in Eco Challenge in Fiji last September uh, with teammates Shane Hagerman, Chris Von Enns, and Michelle Hobson. We finished, we got 20th place overall. We finished in eight and a half days, if I remember correctly. Uh, we had a great time. It was, uh, Definitely a challenging course. Uh, I think uh, we need hope for some more nav to make it a little bit tougher in the mm -hmm. nav because we, we think we would have done a little bit better because uh, we are a stronger navigating team. Um, but, you know, the, the race course was fantastic. They mixed it up really well. The, uh, the people there were awesome. I mean, this is all stuff. If you've listened to Randy's interviews, I mean, everybody said the same thing. 
but mm -hmm. yeah, really the logistics for the race were unbelievable. It, that's what happens when you throw a ton of money at a race, but, um, it right. really, uh, it really was several tens of millions. <laughs> yeah. It really was a wow. race. It was not a reality TV show, despite what they showed, you know, that the rest of us, you know, we were racing and, uh, you know, yeah. that's what we went there to do. And, and so it was definitely. So did any of the, did any of the gear that you used this weekend still have a little bit of Fijian mud on it? Or were you, were you able to clean that out? Uh, I think my bike probably did. I've washed it a couple of times, but there's a lot of nooks and crannies. Um, I think mm -hmm. the headlamps that I use, you know, they've, they've got in the, in the bands, there's probably some Fijian mud in there. Uh, mm -hmm. I didn't use the same pack. Uh, there's no need for like the 2,400 liter uh, <laughs> hyperlight pack <laughs> in a 24 in. race. But, right, uh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. That'll just, it's going to be the gift that keeps on giving. You'll just find it in the most unlikely places. <laughs> yep, pretty much. All right. Uh, last thought. Uh, do you have any sponsor or family shout outs before we adjourn? Um, you know, I, uh, a lot of people are asking about lights. Um, you know, love the Lupine lights. We were all running the uh, Lupine Blicas or uh, Picos. You know, had the makes for switch, quick switching between helmet and headband. You know, they're a little overkill sometimes, but, you know, um, I don't think you can ever have too much light. Uh, it's a really, really right. yeah. That's hard. It's hard to complain about being able to see things too well at night. Yeah, I mean that's probably one of the biggest differentiators and game changers in a in a in a race. And it's you know it's an expensive investment, but it really works and and pays off in the long run. I think. Um, right. And you know, just like to say hey to my dad. I'm sorry I gave you the wrong link to the tracking. I hope you found it. Oh. But uh, that was the one I got from the guy who provided the tracking and he wrote it backwards. It was not 2020 bear, it was bear 2020. So, oh, gotcha. But, um, there, there, Mark does a lot of, or uh, uh, Jeff does a lot of good tracking. So, you know, I hope they were able to follow along on Facebook and whatnot. Yep, yeah, that's how I was following the race. Um, was just watching for updates on Facebook and I did have, I did find the correct link to the, it was kind of the unofficial tracker system. So yep. um, yeah, it was just great to follow you and I'm excited to see all of the Randy Erickson photos that come out. And it sounds like, uh, what was the name of the other photographer that was there? Uh, Jim Farmer. He was just, he's a local racer. He was injured mm -hmm. and just uh, helping out. So he should have a lot of good footage as well. Yeah. Great. All right. Well, we'll stay tuned to the AR Georgia, uh, ARGeorgia.com and then also AR Georgia Facebook page um, for more media from uh, the Blairsville Extreme Adventure Race. Um, but Peter, just want to thank you. Uh, congratulations on your victory, um, you. overall win at the Bear 24 Hour. Um, thanks for your time. And we'll hopefully see you at another race this year. Thanks. Looking forward to it.